everybody, I'm Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library and I'm at our downtown Lancaster main location and I'm here to talk to you today about one of the most common questions I get here at the library which is my kid is a struggling reader or my kid doesn't really like to read how do I help them find something that they like to read now before we get into this little talk I'm going to offer a little disclaimer um, I'm going to be doing some book talks, little book commercial talks about every month for the next little while. This particular one is going to be longer than the other ones. So just be prepared for that. This one's a little longer because my I've got a lot of information for you. Hopefully it will be useful. So how do I get my child more interested in reading? That is a great question. I'm going to start by reassuring you that all reading is good reading. So there's no such thing as a book that will make your child a worse reader. So we are going to focus on getting your child reading because the only thing that will get your child to be a better reader is for them to read more. Practice makes perfect. The more your child reads, the more they enjoy reading, the more reading that they do, the better they'll get at it. So I have a list of tips here for helping your child pick out books that they will love to read, so that they will want to read, so that they will read more and more and more and more, and next thing you know, your kid will be an excellent reader. So tip number one, encourage your child's reading choices. In other words, don't judge what they pick. The number one Thing. Research shows us that the number one thing that encourages children to read is allowing them to pick their own books. So um, don't judge what your child chooses to read. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Dog Man, and other super popular silly stuff isn't less good than other kinds of reading. If a kid is having fun with the books they pick up, they'll keep picking them up and they'll keep reading and they'll keep better, getting better at reading. The stuff that they're required to read for school is chore reading. And the stuff that they're reading at home in their free time is their re leisure reading, their pleasure reading. And even if it's for a school reading log, it should be whatever they want. Judging stuff that kids like to read as less good can be a major blow to kids' self-esteem and self-confidence. Kids pay a lot of attention to what their parents say and what they think, and if they feel like, because of the stuff they like, that they're less smart or what they like is less good, um, it can be a real blow to their self-confidence, and they might feel like they're not good at reading as a consequence because they don't like the stuff that looks less hard. When kids get it in their head that they're not as good at something or that something isn't for them, their frustration level can go up and it becomes harder for them to do. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Since they think they can't do it, um, when they hit something that requires effort to do, uh, they think it's proof that they can't do it. And it's this vicious sort of cycle. Kids are more likely to persevere with something um, when they think they can do it or when it's something that they enjoy. And that's what we want with their relationship with reading. So when your kid picks up something that they're interested in or they're excited in, show enthusiasm for it to say, oh, you've been looking for that or oh, that looks funny or oh, that looks good. Why don't you read it and tell me about it? Even if you think it looks silly or you think that it looks like something you wouldn't be interested in. If that's what your kid wants to read, show enthusiasm for it just like your kid does. And trust me, it'll make a huge, huge difference. Another good tip is letting your child reread things. Uh, this is great for your child's comprehension. Um, there's two halves for a kid to learn how to read. One half is learning how to recognize a word or sounding out a word, like looking at the word discombobulate and knowing that that word says discombobulate. The other half of learning how to read is knowing what the word discombobulate means. So if a book looks too easy or they've read it before, that's okay. They can decode it just fine. Now they can work on really 
mastering what it means. They can work on that comprehension. They can work on their fluency, how easily they can read it. They can work on making sure they know what all the exclamation marks mean and what all the punctuation means. And they can work on the vocabulary and what all the emotions are. And rereading just helps them really master that text and it helps their reading overall. Kids are designed to learn by repetition. So letting kids reread is one of the best ways that they can really grow as a reader. So if your kid has a favorite series or a favorite book, and that's just what they wanna keep rereading over and over and over again, not only is it developmentally appropriate, it's one of the best ways that they can grow as a reader. Now, does this mean you should never, ever, ever push your kid to try something new? No, but all reading is good reading. All reading practice is good reading practice. So as long as your kid is reading, I don't think you need to stress too, too much about it. So my next big tip is treat reading levels with a gallon of salt. A lot of local school districts use guided reading or advanced reading levels or AR reading levels. And they are suggestions at best. And sometimes they just kind of don't make sense. They focus on how difficult the words and sentences are to decode. Um, meaning, how hard are the words to sound out? How many words in a sentence are there? What they're not focusing on are what are the themes in the books? What are the ideas? How difficult is the plot to understand? What are the characters going through? What problems are they grappling with? What's happening in the book? For example, the book Twilight, which is a wonderful book. Um, for most reading levels, however, have that book as being for third or fourth graders. That book is in the teen section for a reason. It's not really something most librarians would hand to a fourth grade student. AR levels are an okay place to start, but they are not what I would base um, book selection on in any real meaningful ways. There's a lot of really excellent kids chapter books out there with very complex plots, setting, character development, and so forth that are slapped with lower reading levels because the actual words that are used have fewer syllables or because the writing itself is really accessible, but the concepts are harder to comprehend. And that's not fair for the younger kids or struggling readers because while they might be able to decode what the book means, they might still not really get the plot. They're just not there yet. Your third grader might understand it sort of, but it won't resonate with them like it would with a sixth grader. A lot of development happens between third and sixth grade because they're not really the intended audience and they'll miss key details. And the intended audience might miss it because they feel constrained by a reading level and then they'll miss out on a book that they'll love and would really deepen their understanding about something age appropriate and relevant to their lives that would really help them grow and develop as a person because of a pretty arbitrary number slapped on a book. And some of our kids' books in the department deals with some pretty deep stuff. Divorce, death, dementia in the family, addiction, eating disorders, mental health issues, physical health issues, war, displacement, homelessness, abuse of all kinds. This stuff is real. It affects kids better they need it through a book and be able to discuss it with an adult now or if they're going through it themselves, know that they're not alone. Um, it should be in their literature. It deserves to be there, but those are the sorts of things you should be looking at when you're picking a book. You should be looking at what is in the book, what the book is about, as opposed to just the number on the book, which leads me to my next tip, which is that kids are very good at putting down books they're not ready for, either because they don't like it or because they're not ready for what's in the book yet. Let kids not finish things. 
if a kid doesn't like something, either because it's just not floating their boat or maybe they're just not there yet, if we're trying to foster a love of reading in our children, penalizing them for putting something down that they don't want to read doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let your kids not finish things. Which leads me to my next tip, which is when you go to the library, pick multiple options. Never walk away with just one book. That's silly. Um, you're not buying something. You're not taking it away for permanent. You can take out up to 50 items. So take out five, especially if you have a kid who is struggling or who is a reluctant reader. That just means that your child hasn't discovered what they really want to read yet. So it makes sense to pick out a wide selection of things, pick and choose. So pick about out a bunch of stuff and that way if your kid puts down something that they don't really want, they have a backup option. So what kinds of options though are good picks potentially for your reluctant readers? Now we're getting into a little bit more specific stuff here. My first suggestion is for a lot of reluctant readers, nonfiction is actually a really good option. Um, a lot of reluctant readers aren't really interested in books for the exquisite detail in the literary blood, blood, blood. They'd be far more interested in reading information, facts. They'd rather read for a purpose, and there is nothing wrong with that. There is tons of very high quality fiction for kids that comes out every year about all sorts of topics. We have a huge nonfiction section here at the library about just about everything you can think of. Um, so nonfiction, give it a try. It might not be what you are drawn to as a reader, but no problems with that. Also, they tend to have really high quality photographs, charts, infographics, and other things of that nature, which are also great because that way your kid is learning how to read images and charts and things like that. And in our media and graphics heavy world, that's also a really important liter literacy skill to have overall. And uh, so that's also a real benefit. They, our nonfiction is sometimes, often actually slapped with an unnecessarily high reading level. Um, so if you do notice that we write our reading levels on the inside cover of our books. So if you notice that it seems to have a pretty high reading level, take it again with a grain of salt because nonfiction often has topic specific vocabulary included in the book. But the book, the excuse me, those vocabulary words are often defined in the text and also come with a pronunciation guide. If your kid's really interested in that topic though, they might either already know that vocabulary word or learning that vocabulary word won't be a problem. So again, take the reading level with a grain of salt. Another perk to nonfiction though is common core standards. I know, I know, common core, oh my gosh, but it is something a Common Core standards do emphasize. The older a student gets, the more Common Core suggests that kids do read nonfiction. Um, the idea being that when a child is younger, they're still learning how to read, but then at around fourth grade, kids start making that switch from learning how to read to reading to learn. And now you're reading history texts and science texts books to like learn about history and science for example so there's and you get all of the same benefits from reading nonfiction that you get from reading fiction so lots of nonfiction options and a lot of non or a lot of struggling and reluctant readers prefer nonfiction anyway so give that one a try another fabulous option for struggling or reluctant readers, or just readers in general, are my personal favorite graphic novels. I'm gonna get on a little soapbox here. Graphic novels are not cheating. They are, again, they have all the same benefits from, you get all the same benefits from reading a graphic novel that you get from reading a traditional novel. They have really quite advanced vocabulary. 
but since there are pictures included, they help define the words sort of in context. Um, they have very complex themes, plots, characters, settings, all of the other stuff that you get from traditional novels are in graphic novels as well. They are often slapped with lower reading levels than they ought to have, um, which is again, not necessarily fair. It won't hurt younger children to read the graphic novels for older children, but as I said earlier, older children might understand those plots a little bit better than the younger ones. The graphic novels in the children's department do not get particularly graphic. There's nothing in there that would be inappropriate for a younger child, but they're not just for younger children. But anyway, if as, as evidence to support my argument that graphic novels are just as beneficial and have all of the same great stuff that traditional novels do, Every year, the American Library Association has Youth Media Awards. They are the gold standard of books for kids. And every year, the most distinguished award for children's literature for ages four to 14 gets given out. It's called the Newbery Medal. And last year, for the first year, it went to a graphic novel. It's called New Kid by Jerry Craft. And the most distinguished book in children's literature that was published in America last year went to a graphic novel. They are real books. They are not cheating. You get all the same benefits from reading a graphic novel as you do from a traditional novel. And they are less daunting. If you have a struggling or a reluctant reader, they are less daunting than a traditional novel. Your kids are more likely to want to pick them up. They're more likely to enjoy them, and it's a great, great way into reading. So give them a try. Just That's all I have to say is give them a try. Also, the kids get the benefit of learning how to read images fluently, just like with nonfiction, which is another benefit in our media-heavy world. Which brings me to our next really great option that we have for struggling and reluctant readers, which is audiobooks. Audiobooks are not cheating either. Studies show that listening to an audiobook lights up the same parts of your brain that, that reading a traditional novel does. Just listening to it all by itself lights up the same parts of your brain that reading a book does. How cool is that? Studies also show that listening while reading, a book, following along in a book, improves fluency and comprehension by a huge percentage. So if you have a kid who is falling behind or who is struggling or who is just intimidated by a book, encourage them to listen to the audio while they read and their comprehension will go up, their fluency will go up, they'll just, they'll understand it better and they'll probably enjoy it more. And how is that gonna hurt anything? Another a set of interesting studies and a sets of surveys also show that most children wish that their parents still read out loud to them. I found that fascinating. Most kids miss being read out loud to. Other studies show that kids who are read to for longer benefit in a whole lot of ways. They can talk through the more difficult topics in books with their with their trusted adults. They learn more advanced vocabulary younger. They're exposed to books they're not ready to read independently yet younger. And overall, they just enjoy reading more. So if you have a struggling or a reluctant reader in your home, bring them to the library, pick out a book that both of you think you might enjoy and read it together. Take turns reading it or you just read it to them and remember that it's for pleasure. Discuss the book, but don't like quiz each other on it. Just enjoy it together. And in addition, this is sort of the ultimate putting your money where your mouth is moment. You're trying to emphasize that reading is super important. Well, you're going out of your way to make reading super important and turning it into a bonding moment between you and your child or your children. So, it's a great way to pass the time, and trust me, your kids will pay a lot of attention if you do it, if you do that. So 
At the library, we have books on CDs, we have playaways, which are MP3 players that are preloaded with audio content, and we also have loads of e-audio apps and streaming services as well. They're all on our website. I have, two, I have two more, just two more quick little tips um, that are more sort of lifestyle suggestions. Studies also show that the more kids are surrounded by reading material, the more likely they are to read. So just keep books, magazines, newspapers, whatever, around your house. Keep them in your bag, keep them in your car, keep them just around. The more kids are surrounded by reading material, the more likely they are to pick them up and use them. And the last one kind of goes into the carving out time to read with your children suggestion, which is modeling reading at home, particularly for boys. If they see their male role models reading, they will be more likely to read. And all kinds of reading count, just like we've been saying, audiobooks, magazines, newspapers, graphic novels, traditional novels on your tablet, on your phone, cookbooks, it doesn't matter. Model reading at home around your children all the time. The more that your kids see you read, the more likely they will be to emulate you and do the same. The more you build a reading culture in your home and in your lives, the more reading will be a part of your children's lives too. And the library is full of resources to help you do that, digital resources and otherwise, as well as knowledgeable staff who would love to help you out. You can come to the library to get a library card. Um, we are requiring masks inside the building at this time that cover your nose and your mouth, but we also do have curbside service available at this time. Uh, just you can come in person and ask for help or you can ask for help over the phone and we would love to assist you in any way possible. Have a great day and I hope to see you soon. Bye!